as Paul Marshall crossed the line, while the Hawks and the SIU are closing in on the deputy president. While well, South Africa's deputy president, Paul Marshall is under intense scrutiny following the exposure of his extravagant property purchases. These accusations, which include the 28 million Rand's house in Constantia and the 37 million home in Waterfall Estate, have raised serious questions about his financial dealings. The purchases made through cash transactions have sparked investigation by the Hawks and, of course, the special investigating unit not leaving behind the public protector. Or as more details emerge, the spotlight is also on Mashatile's sons who are reportedly linked to lucrative government contracts awarded during his tenure as MEC. Or the situation has triggered a massive public and media outcry calling for transparency and accountability in the face of South Africa's ongoing battle against corruption. Corruption has been a persistent issue here in South Africa for years with high-profile cases involving government officials frequently making headlines. While Paul Marshatile's rise to the deputy presidency has not been without controversy. While his political career spans decades and he has held key positions within the African National Congress. I don't know about you all, but I think this is something that we really have to talk about. And of course, let's stick right there and see what is going to happen to Paul Mashatele. Believe me, this is not the first time that a political leader has faced allegations in South Africa. Figures like Jacob Zuma have similarly been embroiled in corruption scandals, often resulting in investigations by the Hawks and the SIU. These institutions play critical roles in holding public figures accountable, but the outcomes of their props have often been met with public skepticism. While the Mashatile case has reignited concerns about political integrity and financial mismanagement at the highest levels of government, what a key question surrounding Mashatile's case is, where did the money come from? Buying two expensive homes, each through cash transactions, has set off alarms. Reports suggest that his sons who were involved in contract dealings across several ministries played a role in facilitating these accusations. Allegations are mounting that contracts were improperly awarded and may have involved substantial amounts of public funds. Moreover, the revelation of Mashatile's ties to Edwin Soy, a businessman accused in multiple corruption cases, further complicates matters. Soy's involvement in previous tender scandals raises concerns about the deputy president's connections and the possibility of improper financial dealings. While the implications of these allegations go beyond Mashatile's personal reputation, or as deputy president, he is a high-ranking official in the ANC and his actions could cast a shadow over the party's image. While South Africa is preparing for upcoming elections and the public's trust in the government is already fragile. If the investigations confirm wrongdoing, it could severely impact the ANC's standing and political stability. While perception of the ANC is actually something that many people are actually talking about, while the public's reaction to this unfolding story has been one of anger and frustration, corruption, especially among top officials, has been a sore point for South Africans who feel that their leaders often escape accountability. Well, tell me in the comment section, do you believe Paul Mashatile should be held accountable for his property dealings if wrongdoing is proven? Please drop your thoughts in the comment section and of course do subscribe before leaving.